just as a reminder to everyone, we're still talking about on the track level processing. So that foundation level with our mixed pyramid. Now the techniques we've talked about, they might apply to the group level, to the send and returns and to the master, but we're still on that lowest level, getting the foundation, each track to sound nice, make sure they're working together before we move on to that next level in the pyramid. In case some of you were a little bit confused as to these examples, this is really specific to on the track. And when we do get to on the group, I will have examples where we have group tracks so that you can really hear and understand the logic and reasoning for applying processing as we are and we're going to be getting there very shortly but now we're going to turn to compression which we've already looked at before but now we're talking about it again in the mix context and this video is more of a review than it is a new concept but we will get to use uh, an additional plugin something that we haven't looked at before so if we listen to this part here There's quite a very dynamic. You can see that we get up to minus 0.8 dB here. And in this quiet section, got to make sure that I don't grab that loud bit. You know, we're down to maybe minus 13, minus 14 dB. And for a lot of styles of music, this would be absolutely fine. You wouldn't need to touch it with a compressor or any sort of a limiter. But let's, for example, say that we have a vocalist who's singing at the same time. What happens if the vocalist is singing really loudly in this section here or is singing really quietly in this end section here? There's a chance that one part or the other could be lost. And we want to avoid that. And let's imagine that the vocal is the most important thing. That needs to be sitting on top of this piano part. And we do want the vocal to still have some kind of varying dynamic because that's very natural. It is never a good thing to use a processor to a point of making something unnatural unless that's what you're going for. But if it's just a voice and a piano, we're not gonna like that unnaturalness about the quality of the sound because there's just those two parts that we very commonly hear in our everyday lives. If it's a pop production or something more dance, EDM, something with more synthesizers, it's okay to process the voice a lot harder or to process something natural a lot more because there's all these other unnatural elements to compare it to. So it's not like it's going to throw us way off or anything is going to seem strange. So for me in that situation, if this is going to be sitting in the background, I do want to clamp down on these peaks to make sure that as I bring this down in the mix, I can hear all of the detail all the way throughout and it isn't going to get in the way of that vocal part. So to do that, I need to use the compressor or the limiter in its most traditional of senses, which is to just bring down those peaks so that I can, again, reduce the overall dynamic range. And the obvious first processor most of us are thinking of pulling to right now, I'll give you a second to think about it, my cursor is already on it, is the loud max. Okay, so the loud max is a peak limiter. It has a little bit of like a look ahead functionality to it. You see that like so. And that look ahead means that it's going to be able to react to the peak before it actually happens. All right, so that seems a little bit confusing, but like we saw with the saturator, it doesn't have that look ahead function. So it actually distorts the signal a little bit more. This is able to pull down before it even happens unless you go to an extreme and then of course saturation is added in. But I'm just gonna put the output here to minus 0.1 since we saw the output before going to minus 0.8. And I'm just gonna pull this down a little bit and we're gonna get a bit of peak reduction here. We're gonna go a little bit more extreme than we probably would do in context, but that's just for the sake of example. And I don't wanna see processing at all times. So I don't want that going constantly. Okay, so to me, that actually still sounds pretty natural. I'm not hearing a lot of distortion. Occasionally, I'm kind of hearing this work, like I'm hearing it clamp down and then 
rise very quickly, but not too extreme. And if I'm going to be hiding this in the background with a vocal, I think this kind of a setting would be okay. So I'm just going to bounce this so that we can look and see the difference here with the dynamic range. Remember, in this example, we're coming out with a maximum of minus 0.1, whereas in this example, this peaks out at minus 0.8. However, if you look, you can tell that this version actually looks quite a bit louder, and that's because we've brought up the average level. And we've brought up the average level by quite a bit. So if we just listen to this part before and after, you're going to hear the big difference. And so what this really means is I could now pull this down and pull the vocal up and hopefully just in terms of dynamics, not thinking about frequency ranges right now, we shouldn't have any clashing or any hiding of one part because the other part is too varied and dynamic. Okay, so that would be the first example, but there are a couple of drawbacks to the loud max. The first is we don't have any kind of release control. All right, so this is just releasing very, very quickly. And if you have a really super fast release, that's when you start to hear it. And that's what we're trying to avoid. Now, in this case, it's fairly transparent. It works really well. But the whole point of this style and form of compression is to make it transparent. We don't want to hear the compressor working. That defeats the purpose. That's when it starts to stick out. So this release time might be a little bit too quick, and we don't have any control over that. We also don't have any control over the ratio. So how much is the signal being clamped down when it goes over or past the threshold? Well, every time it goes over this one, how hard is it clamping down? Normally we have a ratio, like a two to one ratio. For every two dB that goes over the threshold, one dB comes out. For every three dB that goes over the threshold, only one is gonna come out if it's three to one. Here we actually have a varied ratio. So the harder it goes in, the more extreme and the more steep that ratio is going to be, the harder it's going to clamp down, which might be desirable. And I'm not trying to tell you don't use the loud max, don't use a classic peak limiter for this sort of application, because in a lot of ways, I think it's actually the best application or best way of using it, but it can be a little bit too extreme at times. And so that's why we might turn and use a different processor. So let's go in here now and let's look at the TDR Nova, okay? Something that we've used many times in the past. So the benefit of the TDR Nova really more than anything else is that we have a varied attack time, we have a varied release time. We want the attack to be as fast as possible and in this particular plugin it goes down to 0.1 millisecond. So is that fast enough? You'll have to let your ears be the judge. And then we have a varied release time. And typically when I'm doing a form of uh, peak reduction like this, I bring down the release as fast as possible to start and then kind of bring it back to taste. So let's just go ahead and try to apply the same form or style of limiting that we just did, only now it's going to be a little bit more of compression because we have that ratio control. If I take it all the way to 10, we then start to get a little more into limiting range, but as I bring that back, it's now a little bit more transparent, a little bit smoother, so to speak. Okay, so now I'm gonna to have to start listening to the release and I'm gonna to try to bring this back to make it a little more transparent. This is pretty transparent to begin with. And I mean, this is why I love something like the Nova for a task like this is even with a very fast release time, still pretty transparent, but I'm gonna bring that back to make it a little more natural. Let's play it over at that first start here where it gets a little bit quiet just to see if anything's happening.
Yeah, and for me, this is kind of like the perfect setting. So I want maybe just a tickle to happen at the really quiet point just to actually confirm to myself that something is happening. But then as it goes further along and gets louder, we're obviously going to see more compression taking place. So let's bounce this one out and just see what it looks like. Okay, so here is our original. And here's our compressed. And obviously the waveform looks smaller. I can change that by adding some like additional gain here to the output. But overall, we've been able to reduce that dynamic range. So just look at this section here in comparison to this section. And we can see a pretty drastic difference right there. Okay, so that would be another way that we could go about kind of trying to accomplish the same thing. And the final example is going to be the new tool we're going to bring into the fold here, which is another one from TDR. As you can tell, they make phenomenal stuff. And that is the TDR Kotelnikov. Okay, so this is another compressor, but this time we don't have the benefit of getting to see the curve kind of bounce around, but that's okay. And if we look here, we have a couple other controls that we haven't seen before. We're not going to talk about any of this stuff on the left here, and you can see this is called a mastering compressor. But the reason it's really called a mastering compressor is because it's so dang transparent, so it can work really well for this function as well, is that we have a soft knee that we're going to talk about. And then we also have two different release times, a peak release and an RMS release or an average release. All right, I'm going to talk about that as I put the settings in here. So notice that we can actually bring this attack time down to 0 0.02 milliseconds, which means we should be able to grab that peak even a little bit better. This time I wasn't seeing any motion in this quieter portion, but I don't think I need to. If you look really closely, what you're going to see is that the dark blue box is actually corresponding to this really fast release time that I've set. And then there's a lighter blue box that more or less is corresponding to the RMS. So it gives it even a more natural release curve. And this is actually common in many analog style compressors that you see. Like the LA-2A is famous for something like this where it will let go of that really hard transient quickly with like the peak release. And then it has a slower characteristic. And that's why it's so popular on things like pianos and vocals. It's that natural effect. And this compressor is just so ridiculously transparent transparent. Um, it's just hard to even put into words kind of how good this one sounds because we don't hear it. I mean, it's funny to say something sounds good because we don't hear it, but that's the case with a processor like this. Now the knee control, and this is an example we're just showing you the stock uh, plug in here works really well. The knee control is actually just setting where is the compression going to happen based on the threshold. Okay. So if the knee is really steep, Hopefully you can see that angle becomes very, very sharp here. All right. But as we increase that, it starts to round and curve out a little bit. And I'm going to actually increase the knee here a decent amount because it's going to even make it more natural. It's going to bring that compression in slowly, even a little bit earlier than say minus nine dB or so. So let's get rid of that. <laughs> That's going to be pretty drastic. And this may look like a lot of gain reduction, but we're only seeing down to three. So I can increase this and you can see that it's really not that much gain reduction.
right, so I'm just trying to dial in the settings just like I'd like them. And the other thing with this particular plugin is that it will actually uh, pay attention to the difference in the left and the right and then correspond accordingly. So if something in just the left channel is a lot louder than what's in the right channel, it will compensate for that. This is another reason why this plugin is so amazing and so transparent. And you can see how it then slows down. That's all about that release RMS. Okay, so I think these are pretty much the perfect settings. And if I bounce this, we'll be able to see it again in relation. All right, and again, we're probably gonna have a little bit of like a gain mismatch. So we'll just bring in another dB or two. And again, we can see the difference between all three of these guys, and we could listen to them one by one and kind of get a feel for what's going on. So this is just the original, unprocessed. Or is it? And now we go to the peak limited. The Nova. And then the Kotelnikov. So this is that prime example of what's going on there with that stereo differential, okay? This is the way the Nova handled the very end of this guy. And I just have to again scroll over, I apologize. But we can compare that to how the Kotelnikov handled that. And you'll see that there's more of a live dynamic in there. It's slight, but it's definitely there. And uh, again, it would be up to you to choose which version you prefer the most. For this particular piece, I think I might go with the Nova, but there will be times when the Loud Max works great and times when the Kotelnikov works great. All right, so there you go. Just a review of limiting dynamic range as a means to bring the overall level up, the most basic and classical use of any sort of dynamics processor.